The ultimate fishing experience is brought to you by Lund Boats. This week on the ultimate fishing experience, we join Al Lindner on a lake hopping mission for largemouth bass. Minnesota is chock full of small lakes to explore in all shapes and sizes. And if they're not biting in one lake, a quick jaunt to the next can produce big time. So let's break out those maps, fire up the GPS and get dusty. We're going off the beaten path in search of little hidden gems loaded with big bass treasures. Small lakes, small boats, they add up the big fish. Hi everybody, Al Linder here. You know, I live in north central Minnesota and in a short driving distance around my home here in Brainerd, there's a number of lakes, like hundreds of them that are small to mid-sized that are filled with fish, especially largemouth bass. Some of the best fishing I've ever experienced all across North America is in a short driving distance on these small lakes of where I live right now. And it's overlooked by the vast majority of the people. And this holds true for most of this great nation of ours. Small bodies of water can be absolutely fantastic. Even though there's bunches of small bodies of water spread all over my home state, like there is in many states all over the country, not all of them are the perfect bass lake, the lake that grows big fish and good numbers of them. So what I like to look for, I'll get a county map out, and I look for an area that has a lot of small lakes close by, preferably in a farmland area. That usually means these lakes are a little more uh, eutrophic or more fertile. That means they grow bigger bass. I'm looking for a body of water that has a lot of shallow water cover. Now in this part of the world, most of the cover we have is soft cover. It's weeds of some kind, about every kind of vegetation you can imagine. But the more shallow water cover and cover on a flat, say out to a drop off of about eight feet, the higher the population of bass, that's almost a guarantee. And the other absolute key prerequisite is a tough boat ramp. The tougher the ramp is to get a boat in, the better the fishing is. That's a guarantee. That's why I got my 1725 Bro guide with me. I could put this in water this deep. It's on a roller trailer. It floats off instantly. I can load and unload by myself or with a buddy and be on and off the water in an instant. And I don't care how bad that ramp is. If it isn't a cement ramp, it could be a gravel ramp or where the road touches the side of the lake, and I unload right there. And those are some of the real gems. You start eliminating bass boats, tournament fishermen, and people that like to fish for bass in big boats. I start cutting them out really, really quick. This is no place for bass boats, I guarantee you that. That's how easy it is, nothing to it. You know, this lake that I'm on, you can see the whole thing. It can't be too much more than 100 acres of water. And uh, a lot of these small lakes are not mapped. You can't get good contour maps on them. Now, it'll show up on my hummingbird. I have the shape of the lake. So what I'll do is I'll take a few minutes and actually run the lake with the hummingbird and look for extended points, uh, hope to find a sunken island or a hump, some hard bottom areas off lake structure. Take a look at the lake, and naturally the GPS works. So if I find something, I'll punch it in and come back and fish it. I'm coming up now. It's an extended little point here. 
I'm up on top of the point. So I go like this, then I crisscross the other area. It only takes a few minutes to do it on a small lake, but it's worth its weight in gold. Don't drop the troll and just go fish until you see what, you, what the lake offers. That lift assist on that Minn Kota is amazing. You know, even on a small, small boat like this, I got the big Fortrex and I can hold in any kind of wind. It really works. Generally, at this time of the year, I'll start on the deeper, high percentage spots I've located. If the timing is right, you'll often find some of the biggest bass here. This was not the case this time. One hour of fishing, and only one medium bass told the story. Time to move up. This lake has a mixture of reeds, cane, and shallow wood on the bank. Some good looking stuff, but only small males using it. Another half hour, and that pattern is eliminated. Next, a large lily pad and cabbage flat ended up holding a good number of active bass. Slow rolling a swim bait through the newly emerging pads turned a lot of heads. Hey, there, I got him. Oh, I lost him. I lost that fish. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tail him down here a minute. There she goes. Perfect for this. I can work this pretty good. Oh, look at him. Look, there's another one just moving. That talent is an amazing tool. I'm, I mean, an amazing, amazing tool. I rolled some more good ones here, too. I might have to. This could be the pot of fish I've been looking for here. But unfortunately, there was no more to be found. Hey, this is time to reassess. It's funny how a lake like this, you know, you could be on it now and it's really dead. You, you know, you don't see nothing good. It's in a weird fishering, kind of a weird funk. And, you know, on a little lake, you can cover so much water so fast. I'm, I'm covering these deep cabbage flats that are just developing. I got the lily pad areas. I got some of the few rock points. You know, on a little lake, it's real easy to read it. And this one is being read, it's saying, go somewhere else, Al, soon. Closed captioning is brought to you by Mercury Marine, 75 years of marine excellence. You know, you could double up on these rods. I could put tw put 20 rods in this rod holder. I've got five bait casting rods with me now for what I'm doing. But you could bu put double rods in each one of these ho holes spinning in, in bait casting. I've got 20 rods. 20 in a boat this size. That's something. I didn't even have to take my vest off. I'm jumping out of one lake, I'm going to be the other one within minutes. And uh, uh, it's a little bit disappointing. Uh, I caught like eight or nine fish. Uh, I missed one big one in the shallow water. In two hours, we fished that entire lake up to shallow and deep. Most of the bass we caught were, you know, pound and a quarter stuff. And that's not what I'm looking for. And that deep fight, I fished it enough right, right if they were out there. I don't, but, but I'm going to go to another lake. I got enough time. It's only two o'clock in the afternoon. You know, I'll go hit another body of water. When these little lakes are on, it's really interesting. One lake on one side of the road can be off. You drive right across the road to the other side, put your boat in, and the fish are on fire. Go figure. That li lizard has been around for so many years, yet this time of the year, pre-spawn, spawn, and even post-spawn, or on a Carolina rig, that thing still whacks. Lots of fish. All of the new shapes and sizes and designs of baits. That old lizard, whew. Especially early in a season like this, them fish cannot stand it. There's one out of there. I think that fish move a little bit in there. It'll move a little bit. She'd be about where you would expect her to be. Come here, baby. A little bit better. Huh? We're getting at least on our way here. The lake's a little bit better. The fish looks a little bit better. 
starting to get a little bit of size out of them. You know, at the time of the year that I'm fishing here right now is one of the most difficult times to catch these bass. It's late stage pre-spawn. People think that pre-spawn bite can be suicidal. Well, the earlier stage of it can be, I'm gonna need another lizard. But they get in a mood where sometimes you see them and they're so spooky, they're just kind of coming in. They're not, they're, some of them are bedding, they're starting to set up, but the big fish are just coming in and they're real touchy. Drop speed is incredibly important. Silent, quiet presentations are important. I wanna show you four baits. These four baits are guaranteed to work for you no matter where you fish. Of the four go-to baits, two of them I consider target baits. Baits primarily pitched to specific cover like wood or weeds. That would be the tube, either Texas rigged or on a jig, and a lizard, Texas rigged or unweighted. For covering water, an unweighted minnow profile allows for combing large flats with a really subtle action. An in-between bait of target versus search lure would be the stick bait, rigged either wacky style, unweighted, or add a tail weight for a real unique action. Yeah, way out there, Anna. A weightless, huh? She ain't good. She ain't good. But she's a fish. And that one hit a, a weightless jerk bait. And it's the flutter minnow. You know, there's tons of these things. When these fish get like this, sometimes this bait, when you got to cover these flat areas behind me, you know, where you're not target fishing with a tube or a lizard. You know, weightless jerk bait just thrown out over the flats around it can really be a killer. The key is, is that bait's got to drop slow. You know, what I mentioned before, it's incredible to me and I can't tell you why. One lake a half a mile away on the other side of the road is totally oh, off. Got off you you yeah. pull the boat out, you come in, you drop, drop down on a lake right on the other side and the fish are on like crazy. I don't know why it happens. All I know is when we got these lakes with lots of fish in them, in, in an area, after two hours on one lake, if there ain't a bite going, time to go. Oh, a little bit better. Not gigantic. Hey, I thought you were better than you were, but I'll take you. you know, this is what kind of what we're looking for now. I'm getting better, better fish. The bite is definitely improving. Good looking fish, there's nothing wrong with her. She's healthy, not real porky, but a good looker, to say the least. You know, one thing about the 1725 Pro Guide, it has all the amenities that my 2075 Big Boat has. There is so much room in this boat, you'd be amazed how much stuff you could put in here. In fact, I'm gonna show you something. All of the stuff that you're about to see came out of this boat and is going back into it. This is not a bad one, not a bad one at all. Not a giant, but not a bad one. Coming back down this bank, I threw a lizard first. I threw an unweighted minnow. And I, I know there's more fish, and I missed a couple, so I figured. This time of the year, wackying. Huh? Got to throw a wacky. You're going to get bit. There's no question. No question. That didn't take long. A little bit earlier, when these fish first come up, and they're really aggressive, you know, rolling a spinner bait, throwing a, a swim jig. You know, but they get in a mood then, all of a sudden they get in a mood where they won't chase a bait. And they're in that mood right now, they get real weird. They're gonna bed here shortly. They're not on them yet, but they're just kind of coasting these shallow water areas, playing around, looking around what to do, where they're gonna hang out. They're so spooky that if you cast at them, all of a sudden they go down and go away. You gotta throw over them, a lot of times if those fish are there, all you got to know is they're in the area and just start fishing. <laughs> you get in these back bays like this, this time of year, obviously, 
a big bunch of the fish move into the back bay, bays, the warmer water. No, there's some fish in the main lake, there's no question about that. But you got a lot of wood piles like this. See that pea green algae floated up into this cor corner here? That's a good thing. The kind of water that I'm talking about, when you get lakes that have that, it's a sure indicator that the population of largemouth bass is very, very high. It's very fertile. The carrying capacity in a lake like this is prime. That's not a bad thing. It's a good thing, and that's one of the things I'm looking for when I'm looking for big bass water. A lake that looks like that pea soup. I like it. You know, something to, to, to think about when you're getting a, a depth finder, get one that has a temperature. Read out in it. Oh, I can't say enough about that. Look at that. Not a bad fish. Look at it. Oh. Like this back bay that I'm in right now. You know, it's 68 and change here. That's the warmest water that I found here since I've been. I know the other sections of the lake that I've been in, I've been talking. You know, 63 is cool as 63. But that temperature is such an important thing, especially in spring of the year. Two, two degrees warmer can make a huge, huge difference. It's really, really, really important in spring and then again in fall when the water temperature is dropping. Man, could, there's a good fish. Good fish. A yeah, better fish. Yeah. I thought it was a good fish. It ain't. Yeah. It's a nice fish. One with a great attitude. Acted really tough. <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, that's the one I'm looking for. But it wasn't. You know, on these little boats like my 1725 here, it's got a pretty good sized gas tank. I filled that gas tank once and I could fish a month on these little lakes and not fill it again. That's how fuel efficient that four-stroke mercury is. You know, you're fishing most of the time, not running most of the time. It's not like the big reservoirs in that where you're burning 40 or 50 gallons of gas in a day. That don't happen on these lakes and it don't happen with that, that smaller four-stroke. And that's a big deal today. Four-stroke motors have a lot of advantages, mostly on multi-species tiller boats like I'm in today. Why? These boats are often used for trolling, either back trolling or forward trolling. Lots and lots of hours running at slow speeds. Because oil isn't added to the gas, they run cleaner and quieter. Minimal fumes, minimal spooking of fish. And if you have a big tiller option, you can fine tune your RPMs to reach that perfect speed. For smaller boats that push a lot of weight or pontoons, Mercury's big foot motor is a great option. With its larger gear case, you could put on a larger prop than you can put on other motors of equal horsepower. Put the four bladed Spitfire prop on it, which has a ton of surface area. You'll have a boat loaded down with anglers and gear up on plane in no time. All in all, four strokes run cleaner, quieter, with less maintenance, which lets you focus more of your efforts on fishing. You know, when somebody fishes with me for the first time in, in this boat, one of the things they inevitably say before the day is over is, I can't believe how stable that boat is. You could take three adults, three adult people, stand on this side of this boat, and the boat will barely move. I dare you to try that with any other aluminum boat. Oh, good, good fish, big fish, big fish. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Come on, mama. <laughs> A little better one. Oh, yeah. That one liked the. Give me one more jump, huh? He liked that cigar big. Oh. That one definitely enjoyed biting on a cigar bait, one of the all-time best things you could throw this time of the year for fish like this. Hey, let's take a second here, do a quick break, and I promise you I'll be right back, and I won't make another cast.
a different fish than that other fish. It was definitely a decent day. I caught a lot, a lot of fish. No real, real big fish, but a lot of fish. Seen hardly any boats out here. That's kind of a fisherman's dream, isn't it? To have a lake entire, entirely to yourself, that isn't common on these smaller uh, bodies of water. They don't get fished really, really hard. And the fishing, well, it's always pretty darn good. But you know what? These kind of spots just don't fall into your lap. I spend a lot of time researching new lakes to find those rare gems that are off the radar for most folks. I get on the computer to check websites, I talk to bait shop operators, I chat with good anglers and guides. Mostly, I'm looking for clues, not an invitation. Every year I spend countless days exploring new areas and new waters. It's something I really love to do because it keeps things exciting and I never know for sure in advance what I'm going to catch. Some lakes look promising, but turn out to be a bust. Some are only so-so, no big deal. But every once in a while, you come across exactly what you're looking for. Lakes loaded with big bass that nobody else is catching. Want to know a secret? The key is just getting out and doing it. Anyone who's willing to put in the time and effort to go off the beaten path to fish small remote waters that see little fishing pressure will eventually find what they're looking for. But when you do, be careful about sharing it. Some secrets are just too good to give away. The key to success on bodies of water like this are real simple. Smaller size boat, roller trailer. You could put in water this deep. It doesn't even have to have a cement ramp. It could be where the road comes alongside uh, the lake. And I got a lot of lakes like that that I fish and they produce big time. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Thanks for joining us. If you'd like more information, check out lundboats.com or these other online outlets.